Hey friends, Pastor Bill Walden here with Build Up the Church. Hope you're doing great. God bless you. This is the devotional word for August 1st, 2024. It's out of the Book of Romans, chapter 5. We are reminded that the theme of the Book of Romans is the just shall live by faith. And some people, I think, have appropriately turned that phrase around, by faith, the just shall live. So we become just or right with God by faith in Jesus Christ. God doesn't sweep our sins under the rug and say that they're not important. He says, your sins are incredibly damaging and you've broken my laws and that demands justice, but I sent my son in your place to be the substitute for you. In essence, it's we that should have gone to the cross, but instead Jesus went to the cross for us. And so the just shall live by faith, and by faith the just shall live. So what happens when we are justified? And we remember that that little word justified has been kind of paraphrased into a useful phrase that says, just as if I'd never sinned. What happens when a person is justified? What's the benefit of salvation? Besides uh, being delivered from the penalty of hell, what is the, the here and the now benefit of that? And Paul talks about that in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. He says, therefore, having been justified by faith, so it's by faith we are, are made right with God, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. To have peace means there is, a, there is an end of hostility, there is an end of estrangement. The Bible says that our sins separate us from God. God, lo God loves humanity, but he can't share life with us, if you will, relationship with us, if we are living in sin and have sinned because he's perfectly holy. There's no common ground there. And so the enmity, the hostility, the separation is broken, is healed, is ended uh, when we become justified by faith. And so we have peace with God. There's a, there's a oneness. There is a togetherness that happens that was previously impossible. And it happens through Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul goes on in verse 2. He says, through whom, through Jesus, also we have access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. So imagine, uh, you know, there's a door and you're outside of this room. And um, inside of that room is uh, justification, being pronounced not guilty. Jesus is the door. There's no other ways in. So Jesus is the door. You go through the door. You have access by Jesus to justification. And as you're walking around that room, you also find, oh, I have peace with God because I have access to peace with God through Jesus Christ. Paul says, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And grace is unmerited favor. And grace is strength for daily living. Grace is a multifaceted, multi-defined word. It means the friendship of God, the, the divine presence of God, the assistance of God, the gift of God. Um, grace, the acronym is God's riches, all of his riches at Christ's expense, G-R-A-C-E. And so we come through the door of Jesus Christ, we find justification, we find peace, we find grace in which we stand and we remain in that position of God's gracious salvation before him. We don't receive salvation <clears throat> by faith and by grace and then go on to maintain our relationship through being good. It's all of grace. Paul goes on and he says this, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We rejoice in, the, in this life, in all that God has for us, and eventually in the glory of God, that our, these bodies will be transformed. Now, if you're a younger person, you're probably thinking, hey, you know, I'm kind of enjoying my body. As you get a little older, <laughs> it gets a little harder. Um, but there is a glory that awaits the Christian when we take our last breath here and take our first breath there. Paul piles it on now in verse 3. Not only that, if, if that was all, that would be immensely enough. But not only that, we also glory in tribulations. So when the Christian is going through a hard time, we can, we can not just see the bad side of it, but we can see the good side of it. 
the tribulations are hard. If they weren't, then they wouldn't be called tribulations. And everybody goes through tribulations. It might be financial setbacks or family breakdown or loss of a career or health or anything. But tribulations are difficult just by their very nature. But we can glory in them. We can say this is going to turn out okay. Paul goes on to say, knowing, <clears throat> not hoping, <clears throat> but knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And one of my old pastors used to use the, the phrase stick to itiveness. You just stick to it. You just hang in there. Because we have this presence of God in our lives. And by his grace, we can expect that he's going to bring good things out of the tribulations we go through. Tribulations produce perseverance. So we hang in there. Perseverance produces character. So you become a stronger person. Perhaps your tendency is to complain and feel the victim when something goes wrong immediately. But as you move on in your Christian life, you realize, hey, these things are making me stronger. It's like putting metal through the, through the fire. It, it, it uh, makes it stronger. Uh, it's like putting gold in the fire. It burns off the impurities. Our character becomes more like Christ. Perseverance produces character and character produces hope. It's an expectation. You know, we might say, I hope I win the lottery, but that's that's really not an expectation. It's just like, oh boy, I just wish something would happen like that. But there's really not an expectation. The Christian term hope in the New Testament, it has the idea of somebody looking down the road with an outstretched neck, knowing that somebody's coming and you're just waiting for them, but you're expecting that they're gonna be there. So what is what is justification, peace with God, Peace with God, we have access into by faith into grace. We rejoice in the glory of God. Not only that, we glory in tribulations. Things are going to work out okay. Not even okay, they're going to work out great. Tribulation produces perseverance. We, we have stick-to-itiveness. Perseverance produces character. We become deeper, more Christ-like people. And character produces hope. What a great thing it is to be a hopeful person. Verse 5, now hope does not disappoint. <clears throat> Well, when we have hope in God, he's always going to work things out for our good. Now, we might, hoping, we might hope that our tribulation turns out a certain way, but we realize when it doesn't turn out that way, it wasn't so much about how it was going to turn out, but that God was going to use it for good. That's what we can always hope in. We don't know how it's going to turn out, but he's going to use it for good. Hope doesn't disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. And so... We go through all those things with love in our hearts. So what a tremendous life is the Christian life. I, I hope that you know Jesus. And if you do, hope you know him deeper. If you don't know him, pray that you'll meet him. Just, I always encourage people, just say, Lord, if you're there, I'm ready. And he'll reveal himself to you. So things to think about. Thanks for watching.